Um, we have this thing called designing a strong and healthy New York. And to me, that made some sense. Strong and healthy New York. So I started using free resources and looking at, at things that were already out there because there is no need anybody to invent the wheel. It is done. You know, it took us 5,000 years to figure out how to put it on a luggage, but that's a whole other story. <laughs> but the wheel is here. Use it. And lo and behold, I did. And six months later, my South Bronx classroom became the greenest school in all of New York City with not any outdoor space behind you. We still have the greenest class in the greenest school in all of New York City. Then what really became remarkable, my kids started taking the money that we were making from our farmer's market and sponsoring Haiti. They started sending gifts to Japan. So when my kids from the, smallest, the poorest congressional district in America can start doing things globally to affect change, so can the richest. And that was what I call the si se puede moment. So I started realizing that really there is something green for everybody, long before I even heard about the USGBT, but I'll get there too. And we started doing all things. See these t-shirts? My kids design them. They source them. They make sure there's no child labor. They do the logos. They do everything. It's a whole new spirit of entrepreneurialism that is taking over, because this is a si se puede moment. And lo and behold, we gave birth to the Green Bronx machine. But what does it really look like? Um, reconfiguring our own community, understanding what it used to look like. But this is what my community looked like. My school, there's the garbage dump down there. I'm two blocks in this way. That's a tough place to go to work every day. That's a tough place to go to school. You know how hot it is out there in the summer? You know how much rain comes and just accumulates and runs and does all kinds of stuff? So we had this vision. Cool thing was we did it in art class. The kids started reconfiguring the way they were thinking about the world. We started designing. And lo and behold, we started writing grants. And we got the community involved. We started building. And no one is prouder than me to say that that's our street now. And there we are marching up, a thousand of us. <laughs> that's ownership. And there we are, bringing people and community together in ways we've never imagined. Now, some of you have heard about Hunts Point. Maybe you've seen the HBO special. But again, we're here to redefine that. Whether you live there or you're an absentee landlord, you now have roofs that have 30 more years usable life. And thanks to Mayor Bloomberg, you also get the tax abatement. So now there's not a roof. These roofs used to be about 165 degrees in the summer. There's not one of them that goes over 85 degrees. All that water, all the stuff that kids hated, you know, got on our uniforms, going to school. Those huge puddles are gone. So I'm really the luckiest guy on the planet. But how does it really start? I heard there are a lot of teachers in the room. It really, and I got there sideways with older kids, it really starts with little kids. And that's what I'm here to tell you, building good habits instead of undoing bad ones. So no more future Knicks or Nets or Jets or Yankees. Um, I like little mushrooms, little broccoli, you know, little <laughs> lettuces. Um, and these are my future farmers digging up, you know, creating their own little plots, learning about nature and learning about nurture. And they are working together. When I mean, you start them young and tenacious like this in community gardens, it's remarkable what happens. Uh, those are the fruits of our labor, and we're proud. They're sharing their learning. And in a neighborhood where buildings were formerly burning, you know, we can go back to being an indigenous people once again. And I believe that. So that's the South Bronx now. Here at Brook Park and here in Bissell Gardens, two of the most transitory communities where so many people are even undocumented. We are feeding people without a food stamp or a fingerprint. And to me, that's a si se puede moment. That's my South Bronx. Somewhere over the rainbow people is the new South Bronx, and I'm proud to be a part of it. But when Jose can start paying attention to details about cucumbers and the skin and the colors, those are the kinds of concrete academic skills that I love. And you know, when Omar tells me that carrots come from under the ground instead of through a styrofoam bag in a bulletproof window in the cafeteria, I'm thrilled. And again, when you start kids developing a taste, they will put anything in their mouth, and they love it. I'm doing vowel consonant blends now in school with this thing called Calabasa, because I couldn't afford the $2,200 software program anyway that didn't work, and my computers in school don't work anyway. So we're reading and writing and cooking it and growing it and talking about it. My reading scores are going through the roof. And again, when you expand their palates, you really expand their vocabulary. And at the end of the day, that's what it's all about for me. And more importantly, when you get the big, well, now I'm not so heavy, but when you get the big white guy out of the middle and start creating intergenerational accountability between big Jose and little Jose, my job is done. You know, I'm the conductor of an orchestra I can't play an instrument of. But again, these are my kids in the South Bronx growing food that looks like this. This is our arts and crafts. These are our mini walls, and we're doing this indoors. It's rather remarkable.
I got to tell you, that's uh, for, you know, Cinco de Mayo, the Spanish teacher. These are kids realize I'm sending home food for kids that I'm impacting their family income sometimes by 10 to 20 percent, giving them access to food that not, is not available, nor could they afford. So it's really rather remarkable. We're growing pumpkin patches on top of the four train, which is kind of <laughs> cool because, you know, every kid should pick a pumpkin and every kid should grow an apple. We're also installing, installing koi ponds for the rich and affluent. So if you're any of the above, please see me. You know, I'd love to talk to you. And my kids would love to show up and we'd love to cash the check. More importantly, we're growing corn in the middle of the busiest, busiest retail strip in the South Bronx, Fordham Road. That's a whole new definition of children of the corn. Um, we're taking garbage and turning it into window farms, teaching kids how to do this. And we're actually sending this kind of technology to our friends in Haiti and DR and to deal with recycling programs where, you know, I don't have certain standards that I have to adhere to here in the United States. But again, it's like getting kids to think about the way they're thinking. I don't expect every kid to be a farmer. I don't. But I expect them to read about it, blog about it, write about it, offer ordinal directions and outstanding 21st century customer service.